In Chatelet, my dudes, and welcome to Polecat Cast number 114, Manchester Bombed, Women Most Affected, where our stealthy, stealthy polecats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss Slam Bam Badger style. Strap yourselves in, lock up the bleach, and make sure the only pills that you plan on overdosing on are the red ones. Welcome to the Dankest Timeline, and special thanks to the CIA ninjas for tuning in. Today's polecat panel consists of... The big half of Big and Robot, Scott, the silverback self-aware simian, Max Derrett, Simpsons kin, and definitely not Snoopy's little bird friend, Woodstock, Polecat Punster and Pussycat Punisher, Hannah, Dr. Random Cam, Panda, Puppet Master, and Long Range Rhetorician, and me, your host, the Doge in Charge. Today, we'll be discussing the following topics. It looks like UCLA is actually financially investing in its students. Assuming they do some professional ongoing activism while on campus, George Soros would be proud. Are you a pregnant woman who has no sense of personal accountability or responsibility towards a little life that you might be carrying because you want to get sloshed? Congratulations, because there are researchers and other activist types who agree with you. And the reasons are that recommending... A, well, I'm sorry. The reason is recommending against prego women getting trashed is... Wait for it. It's sexist. Fuck that cluster of cells anyway. Professional academic trolls write up a postmodern co college paper full of bullshit gobbledygook just to see if it can get past all those robust peer reviewers and become a real-life paper. How well do they do? Former Baywatch babe, actress, and now mostly plastic Barbie doll Pamela Anderson has already come to the defense of male victims of false, false rape accusations in the past. But now she has made another triggering statement. She has declared herself an anti-feminist. In the wake of the suicide of Soundgarden frontman Chris Cornell, it is important to talk a bit about male suicide and why Cornell's death is looking more like the rule than the exception. I'm sure you've all heard about the deaths of over 20 people at Ariana Grande's concert show in Manchester. We are going to be digging into an article about that very matter. And finally, our bonus story for the patron-only after show. Between the headlines about the UVA frats, the Canadian broadcaster Gian Gomeshi and Bill Cosby, it seems like sexual assault allegations are dominating the news. But in Britain, there has been a recent spate of headline-grabbing cases where the people ultimately charged aren't the alleged rapists, but the women who filed the claims in the first place. Those poor dears. It looks like it's time to explore the problem with prosecuting women for false rape allegations. That's right. The women are still the victims. Anyway, if you want to participate in our after shows, either as an audience member or a participant, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash Honey Badger Radio. Um, lastly, I'd like to send out our um, a message. Make sure, guys, that Jenk Uger from the Young Turks is still with us. I understand that since the uh, info wars have been <laughs> made official white house correspondence he is on suicide watch so let us get into the stories if you're listening to this after the live show and you want to hear the full stream go to www.honeybadgerradio.com for our unabridged podcasts or look up to the right of this video there's a link to go directly to the unabridged version on youtube start off with something that's uh, i don't know it's kind of funny uh except not really so, for those of you who are fans of The Simpsons, like I am, obviously I am Simpsons kin, remember that one episode where Homer was trying to sell like a sexual performance enhancer inside of a mall, like in liquid form, and he goes up to the one guy and says, Hello, sir, you look like a man who needs help satisfying his wife. Now, imagine that, mm -hmm. but in real life, and instead of a sex drug, it's social justice. Well, that is exactly what is happening at the University of California, Los Angeles. And to top it all off, the school is paying people to do it. A new program titled the Social Justice Advocates Program is going to help students navigate a world that operates on whiteness, patriarchy, and heteronormativity as the primary ideologies. That's a direct quote. Roughly eight to ten social justice advocates will be selected for the upcoming fall semester. They will have to spend three hours uh, per week facilitating their duties, which include weekly meetings and, wait for it, wait for it, Oh, 
This is a long wait. Max? Are we still waiting? Uh oh, I got no sound. Uh, I don't know why that is. Hold on a second. Let me try something. Hello? Roger radio, but for myself. Oh, oh shit. There he is. <laughs> what happened? What? Oh, uh, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Did, did I drop okay. out? Yeah, you, you, seriously? You it was. Never guess what? You <laughs> out. It was so perfect. Oh, God. Was... You said, wait for it, and then there was no more sound. <laughs> wow. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you were, like, waiting, and then. Uh, yeah. Did you get back? <laughs> I, I. <laughs> Seriously, that was that was good because I thought you were gonna you were literally making us wait extra long. Okay, right? so I hit my I hit my breaking point and then I just stopped myself. <laughs> Another Sorry. male suicide report today. And so Max, he was Max Derrick, form of badger. I should have been I should have been like Max, Max, <laughs> Max. <laughs> 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 still here uh, okay. so what i meant to say was wait for it they have to uh do crafting presentations as a part of their duties <laughs> being a social justice advocate to continue on with what i was saying i apologize ladies and gentlemen my internet runs on a potato much like Cladus does in portal 2 uh <laughs> the program is funded through the bruin excellence and student transformation grant program which receives funding from the university's office of equity diversity and inclusion I'm still with you, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is no secret that we here at Honey Badger Radio report on pre-existing articles during our shows. This particular story happens to come from an excellent news aggregator called Campus Reform, which, of course, you know, reports on all the social justice hysteria happening on campuses across the USA. Now, the best part of this whole story is the fact that students who participate in this social justice program have been ordered by their supervisor to not talk the campus reform and to defer interview requests to the UCLA media department. Now in the meantime, I would like to take a second to not speak for Honey Badger Radio, but for myself. If you go to UCLA and somebody comes up to you who says, hello sir, you look like somebody who takes pleasure in subjugating minorities, I recommend you reply with the following. Well hello, you look like a massive tool who needs to do something productive for once in their lives like suck a dick and or clit. Let's talk about drinking while pregnant. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, fellow honey badgers, <laughs> is it a good idea to drink alcohol when you're pregnant? Now, this is an honest question. Yes or no? Of course not. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> the blood no, of my okay. the blood of my enemies. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. If it's the blood of your enemies, yes. But generally, I think the answer is no. Right. Good. So, in theory, we shouldn't have to talk about the contents of this article, right? But since we have a show to put on, pregnancy charities and researchers are calling for a change to government guidelines which warn expectant mothers to avoid alcohol completely. Dr. Ellie Lee, director of the Center of Parenting Culture Studies at the University of Kent, said that, quote, the exclusion of women from an ordinary activity on the basis of a precaution is sexist. No, I'm not fucking joking. Despite the fact that you know Consistent heavy drinking during pregnancy can result in something, you know, just a little thing called fetal alcohol syndrome. Apparently, there is no evidence that, like, to moderate drinking or even the one-off night where you try every drink on the menu will cause any damage. At the moment, it's hard to say whether or not this is coming from a biologist or, you know, the woman who heads the center of something called parenting and culture studies. The British Pregnancy Advisory Service is campaigning for a change in the quote-unquote tone of the advice given to pregnant women regarding alcohol, stating that this might be, quote, needlessly scaring women into aborting pregnancies because of fears that a few, you know, just a few heavy nights out will have caused the fetus serious harm. Of course, trying to determine the effects of light and moderate alcohol consumption during pregnancy would be impossible because, you know, it's unethical. Having said that, it might just be best to assume that eating and drinking healthy products might be best when you plan to bring a pregnancy to full term. After all, the thing that should be on your mind shouldn't be whether or not your feelings are hurt because you can't abstain from alcohol for nine months, but the health and well-being of the baby! 
A paper was published in a peer-reviewed social science journal as a hoax to, pr to prove gender studies is mostly garbage. The paper entitled The Conceptual Penis as a Social Construct was published in Cogent Social Sciences this May. The authors Peter Bogason, I guess, and James Lindsay say that they were careful not Care, careful to make sure that the paper didn't say anything meaningful and set out to publish it with the suspicion that gender studies is crippled academically by an overriding almost religious belief not almost religious come on now yeah. that maleness is the root of all evil here is an excerpt from the paper Many cisgendered hypermasculine males, for instance, seem to identify those aspects of their masculinity upon which they most obviously depend with the notion that they carry their penis as a symbol of male power, domination, control, capability, desirability, and aggression. According to the National Coalition for Men, which compiled a list of synonyms for the word penis, these include the terms beaver basher, cranny axe, custard launcher, dagger, heat-seeking moisture missile, mayo-shooting hot dog gun, <laughs> pork sword, and yogurt shotgun. Based Bishop with the nice red hat. <laughs> Were they just, like, reading off the lyrics of, of pet names for genitalia? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, yeah, well, sort of, yeah. There's, there's so many more, though. But uh, based on... Uh, this is still from the, the excerpt from the paper. Based on an appreciable corpus of feminist literature on the penis, this troubling uh, identification results in an effective isomorphism linking the conceptual penis with toxic hypermasculinity. The paper goes on and even includes a part about climate change. Here is a gem, quote, Climate change is genuinely an example of hyper-patriarchal society metaphorically manspreading into the global ecosystem. <laughs> okay, Bill Nye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> While this is comparable to the Sokol hoax paper that demonstrated that postmodernism was, is, a bunch of gobbledygook, the authors specifically tested their hypothesis that flattery of the academic left's morality is the main determiner of publication in an academic journal in that field. They succeeded. However, it's important to note that their paper was turned down by their target, by their target journal, Norma, the International Journal of Men's Studies, and Cogent, the one that ultimately published the hoax, is a pay-to-publish journal. Reason Magazine points out that this may be better suited as a critique of pay-to-publish journals while reminding everyone the evidence of problems in gender studies are obvious already with real papers titled Women's Studies as Virus, Institutional Feminism and the Projection of Danger, and Glaciers, Gender, and Science, a Feminist Glaciology Framework for Global Environmental Climate Change. Scott, we can tell us about Pamela Anderson. Sure, I'd be glad to. Former model actress, active member of PETA, and source of roughly 75% of burners produced in the 90s, Pamela Anderson has declared herself an anti-feminist. In a recent interview for the new Baywatch movie, Anderson stated, Men get weaker in an authoritarian environment. They don't need to be as manly. And women are working. Who's watching the kids? I may get some heat for this, but I consider myself an anti-feminist. Anderson continued stating her concerns over humans as a species becoming too androgynous and adding that men shouldn't drink from plastic bottles as the plastic contains estrogen. Anderson also expressed joy over the dropping of rape charges against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, whom she considers a hero and has visited several times. All right. Um, it's not really a big story because, I mean, like, I don't really give a shit too much about what celebrities think. But I actually, but there is one thing. My takeaway from this was that Pamela Anderson used the term anti-feminist. And I had never heard that yeah. used by Hollywood celebrities before. Chris Cornell, frontman for bands such as Soundgarden and Audio Slave, was found dead May 18th in his MGM Grand Hotel room after playing a show the previous day. The cause of death was determined to be suicide by hanging, although Vicky Karayunis, Cornell's wife, maintains that his suicide was the result of Cornell's increasing, uh, excuse me, Cornell increasing the dosage of his anti-anxiety medication. Cornell had a long-standing history of mental health issues and multiple addictions, but appeared to have both under control after completing rehab in 2002. 
Cornell's death has reopened important discussions concerning men's health, <clears throat> excuse me, men's mental health and male suicide. According to the Centers for Disease Control, white males between the ages of 45 and 65 make up the bulk of all suicides, with men in general representing over 75% of suicides nationwide. Julie Serrell, president of the American Association of Suicidology, wow, that's a thing, huh? Suicidology and a professor at the University of Kentucky School of Social Work states the subject of male suicide that men notoriously don't seek help. And as people are aging and at the place in their lives where the world isn't looking the way they want, men especially don't know how to reach out and get help or express the way they're feeling pain. Serrell adds that even once men do decide to seek help, medical professionals aren't always trained uh, to look for signs of mental illness and suicidality. Currently, only three states in the U.S. require practitioners of mental health to be trained in spotting suicidality. We don't have a write-up for this one because I wanted to read the article. Um, but basically, this is a story about what happened yesterday at, uh, at the, in Manchester. There was a bombing, and I have an article here by the uh, XX Factor. It's a Slate article, but it's like one of their sort of sub-rags. And it's entitled, The Bombing at Manchester Ariana Grande Show Was an Attack on Girls and Women. Now, let's go in an article and then we can talk a little bit about it after I'm done. So, British authorities have identified the suspect in what appears to have been a suicide bombing and an act of terrorism outside of an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, England on May 22nd. Details are still emerging, but as of late Monday night, authorities had confirmed 19 people dead and more than 50 injured. The victims of Monday's bombing will almost certainly be mostly girls and women. The Grande fan demographic also includes a number of older millennial women, gay men, and general lovers of pop music, of course, but her live concerts are largely populated by tween and teenage girls with their mothers. By staging the attack at a Grande show, the perpetrator or perpetrators chose to target children who may or may not have had an adult around to help them through an emergency situation. And they targeted fans of an artist whose global brand is one of blissful, unsubdued feminine sexuality. Grande has been long the target of sexist rhetoric that has deemed her culpable for any sexual objectification or animosity that's come her way. Her songs and wardrobe are sexy, yet she's maintained a coy, youthful persona. The combination has led some haters to argue that she's made her fortune by making people want to have sex with her. So whatever related harm befalls her is entirely her fault. Like her pop superstar predecessor Britney Spears, Grande has advanced a renegade self-reflexive sexuality that's threatening to the established heteropatriarchal order. If the Manchester bombing was an act of terrorism, its venue indicates that the attack was designed to terrorize young girls who idolize Grande's image. Terrorism works by making people afraid to go about their daily lives, doing the things that make them feel human and whole. Going to work, shopping at the mall, traveling by plane, dancing to Latin music at a gay club, singing along to a fun pop tune that lets young women envision themselves as powerful sexual beings. All concert goers whose nights ended in panic or tragedy on Monday will suffer some degree of post-traumatic consequences in the coming months and years. But the teens and children are the in the audience who are still the, in the middle of developing their conceptions of themselves and the world may find those notions irrevocably altered. Some observers on Twitter are using this moment to take cheap shots at Grande's music and roll their eyes at the makeup of her audience as if a disproportionately young female fan base makes an artist somehow unserious. Multiple confirmed fatalities at Manchester Arena. The last time I listened to Ariana Grande, I almost died too, one Boston-based journalist tweeted. Meanwhile, some reports are saying dozens of unaccompanied children are holed up at hotels, waiting alone until their parents and guardians can come find them. These girls are survivors of an orchestrated attack on girls and girlhood, a massive act of gender-based violence. Oh boy, is that it? That's it. Can I fucking get in there? Yes. Holy shit, this motherfucker has no self-awareness whatsoever. <laughs> Talking about how other people are using this thing as a like a political football or however they fucking phrase that, I forget, but because I'm just kind of seething right now. <laughs> 
to this person is 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 literally saying that other people are doing a thing and then doing the fucking thing that she's accusing people of doing that she finds so egregious or he whoever this person is Let's play some drawful. What do you say? No, we I gotta go on to the. We gotta do the <laughs> after God, show. So we're gonna talk about um, this article by Time Magazine. Time Magazine, kind of a big article. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. Uh, it's or kind of a big magazine. The article is called "The Problem with Prosecuting Women for False Rape Allegations." Yep, yep. Fa- <laughs> like prosecuting women who lie and try to ruin men's lives. That's something that we need to fix because it's bad for women somehow. <laughs> so we probably Hillary shouldn't Hillary do Clinton. it. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's women good. are the real people who suffer when men die at war. <laughs> uh, Super I'm sorry. predators. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and take off. But if you guys want to be a part of the after show, either as a participant or as a passive viewer, you know what to do. Go to our Patreon, become a patron, and you'll be able to join. Um, also, we still have our fundraiser going because we're trying to do the Australia thing. I think that video chill that we did is up. Is that right, Mike? Or does that? No, nope, to- I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until we've finished this broadcast and then it's and then it's published. Ah, all right. Well, there'll be like a fancy ad, but but if you don't want to wait for that, you can just go there now and donate at feedthebadger.com so that we can get. Uh, basically, I need to be Mike's entourage, so. If we can get me to go with him, uh, that would be good for him specifically. Somebody has to fetch Send his. Send these damn boys to the outback already, would you? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Are you part of the patriarchy or something? Yeah, I mean, who's uh... going to get a, a Foster's for him? Isn't that Australian right? for beer? I think it's beer. Actually, Australian for beer. It's Australia for beer. Although Australians, I, if you didn't already know this, if it wasn't news to you, Australians hate Fosters. It's actually <laughs> Australian for tourist. Yeah, That's it's like a- saying that people in San Francisco don't love rice aroni, Brian. I don't know if I can believe this. <laughs> right, exactly. That's a San Francisco treat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get out of here. <clears throat> uh, please leave a comment. Uh, in the low bar, and if you're one of these people who hasn't figured it out yet, this show is not going to be deleted. It's just going to be unlisted. If you have the link, you can still go there, and we also have a playlist of the uncut versions that you can watch. We're doing this in an effort to essentially battle against the YouTube shenanigans, and so far, it has been working out in our favor, so it looks like we're going to be doing all this work. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and leave. Thanks for coming on the Polecat cast. Thank you to my co-hosts. And thank you to for the people who contributed um, by helping with the write-ups. We will talk to you guys next time. See you later.